Hello everybody. Today I'm bringing you a little bit of an Easter scrapbooking layout. I was at Walmart and saw these huge bags of black jelly beans and I took a photo because it reminded me of an important piece of my family, I guess, which I'll tell you about a little bit later. I absolutely loved that background paper, but I had uh, punched out two scallops, so I needed to cover that in some way, shape, or form or cut the paper down. And when I was looking at the picture, there's that little green grass edge on the box with the jelly beans in it. And I thought it would be kind of like a perfect color to pick up on because it would look great with the pink. The other thing that that does is it like grounds the whole layout is the best way to describe it. Literally, it does ground the layout. And I cut off that border strip that was on that and I'm going to use that in another part of the layout. That um, pink paper is from Doodlebug and it's bubblegum paper. It's something from 2008 and the collection name was cut off or was punched out in those punches so I can't tell you what that was. The green paper is Lawn Fawn Let's Polka. It's the freshly cut grass polka color. And what I did there, or what I'm working with now is I'm working with um, some black thickers from American Crafts. They are called Fancy. There's no color on that one. And I wanted to get, the title of this is going to be Black Jelly Beans, and I wanted to make sure that I got the black in the color black. I'm now working with some American Crafts thickers. These are glitter thickers as well. And this is the doll font, but there's no color on it. This is actually one of my favorite fonts. It's just really straight, no serifs or anything on it, nothing fancy about it, but just a really nice size letter and the perfect green to go with this paper. Now I am missing a few letters there. You can tell right now I don't have E's and I don't have a B, so I'm going to have to create those. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. I did pull um, that doily. It's a six and a half inch doily from Recollections from Michaels. And now I'm trying to decide on a journaling card to go with that. And I had pulled this this uh, journaling card that's lined and it has a little pink ging gingham across the top and I decided that was the one that I was going to go with for sure. I really like how white it is but it has a little bit of a decorative element. It also has that black line in it which helps with the black from the title. I pulled my L Studio Let's Eat collection there just to see what I might be able to pull out since this is a layout about food and I am going to pull out the bits and pieces which is their die cuts. The one piece of paper I haven't talked about here is that square of yellow paper or that yellow paper there. That is also from American Crafts. It's from the My Girl collection and I just had a scrap of it so I don't have the name of it and that collection is a couple of years old as well too. So it has little stars on it in um, like an outline and uh, a darker color as well. So I pulled that date circle there and that date circle is from L Studio Everyday Moments from the Bits and Pieces, which again is their die cut pack. And I also pulled um, the that little sweet treats from, I believe, an, another, oh, I, one of the other L Studio Let's Eat pieces as well, but I end up not using it. I think it was from a label. If I remember, I cut it off labels. Um, so just to, you know, I'm it's there, but it is from the Let's Eat collection. I know that for sure. That is not going to actually make it onto the layout. And then that yum that's above, I thought about using that from the die cuts from or the bits and pieces, but um, that's not going to make it. I thought about it because it's gray and it helps sort of bring in the black. I'm going to bring the black in um, in another way though. Right now I'm trying to decide where I want to position that yellow paper and originally I had decided I was going to justify it to the right and now I'm thinking about justifying it to the left but I'm not loving it. So I'm kind of playing around with it. I did pull that um, heart out there and that heart is from the Let's Eat Bits and Pieces as well. 
So I'm kind of playing around here. I, my camera got moved at some point. I must have hit it. So uh, you're missing the very bottom of this layout, but don't worry about it. No big deal because everything that really goes on goes on above the yellow paper there. So it won't be that big of a deal that we're missing that footage. And I left the still at the end is a little bit longer so you can take a, a really good look at it. So I told you I was going to bring the black in in another way. One of the ways that I'm going to do that is that I'm inking all of the papers and all of the elements in the jelly, in some jelly bean soup ink and that, or not jelly bean soup, sorry, Jenny Bolin ink. It's Jenny Bolin fountain pen that is no longer available anywhere though, so you won't be able to find it. It's, it's a couple of years old now and they no longer make inks, but they made fantastic inks. This pad is still actually really juicy which is really nice. So that black is just going to help bring the black throughout the whole layout. I did kind of toy with putting that border strip on top of the green paper, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, it's just sort of laying there because I thought, well, if I can use it, I will. If I don't, that's fine too. I'm going to come up with a much better use for it in just a little bit. So now I'm getting my title kind of down. I was going to stack it on top of each other, but then I decided I really li really liked it that way. And once I did that, it gave me extra space at the top I need to cover. So I decided that border strip would be perfect for that because it helps take up some of the visual space on the top. Still leaves it nice, light, and airy, but uh, takes up some of that space. Now I am using my ATG, but um, I'm having to be put on a lot more... Um, of the adhesive than I normally would because that paper in the background is glitter and it's hard to get things to stick to it. So just keep that in mind if you use glitter paper. You really need a lot more adhesive or you may need a different kind of adhesive than you normally use. So that border strip is doing a really nice job of taking up some visual space but because it's a green and white stripe it has a nice um, lightness to it at the top there. So I grabbed my wax paper before to put the title on so I could move it around. And you saw how that works, where originally I thought when I was thinking about this layout that the black would be stacked on top of the green. But I decided in the end that it looked actually better over the top of that photo mat. And I could do that because I could move it around with the... Um, with the uh, wax paper. Okay, and just getting those thickers down and then I'm going to look at this and decide that um, once it goes down that I left too much space. So I'm going to have to play with that a little bit as well. So sometimes even using the wax paper it doesn't work out quite as well as you would hope. So I'm just going to pull that black in just a little bit more get a little bit closer together so they look like they belong together there. Okay, and I have the title just about set. And now I just have to go through and uh, change the letters here. So I took a period from the letter set and I put it in the middle of the D to make the B. And then I took another period and put it at the bottom of the F to make an E. So that, when you have a really straight line font like this, that's a really easy thing to do um, to, create, to create E's. It's just to take an F with a period. I really like making letters um, from other letters. And yes, you can see it, but you know, overall, is it that big of a deal to me? Um, no. And it just makes your thickers go a lot further. I love thickers, so I realize how, um, you know, in some ways they're a waste, but um, I love them so much and I love the dimension that they provide. So I just pulled that, this label, and that came from the Let's Eat collection from L Studio from that Bits and Pieces pack. And then I was looking at some Jelly Bean Soup stickers I have there, and I found that sticker that says, Life is Sweet, which kind of is a little bit of a play on both the 
um, the fact that the jelly beans are candy, but also the story behind this. And then I found on another sheet, uh, or and the let's the um, life is sweet sticker came from the birthday bisque label stickers, and then I found that star sticker that came from the sightseeing stew jelly bean soup label stickers. I did look for a second at possibly putting on a yellow doodle bug border, but it was just too much. The lightness at the top went away when I did that, so I decided not to do that at all. I did, when I was looking for some elements, find a sheet of American Crafts chipboard from Mayberry, which is a summer collection that's probably at least three years old. I have just a couple pieces left on one chipboard sheet, and I found that um, green 10. And um, I decided that was appropriate because jelly beans in my family rate a 10 out of 10. Black jelly beans, I should say. Rate a 10 out of 10. So I'm just looking here for other elements to put down. And really the story behind this photo is that there are, um, those, those are two and a half pound bags of black jelly beans. And my dad loved black jelly beans. Unfortunately, because he loved them, so did the rest of us in my family. I know that it's really kind of an acquired taste. Um, and I think part of it was is his dad loved anise and black jelly beans as well. So, you know, he kind of passed that on to my dad and my dad passed it on to us. So when we would get an Easter basket, the Easter bunny would leave a bag of black jelly beans for my dad and maybe they were 12 ounces. So they didn't last very long because he loved them so much. And, you know, frankly, we would steal them too. <laughs> I was, so when I saw this two and a half pound bag, I thought, boy, if my dad was still alive, he would have loved that two and a half pound bag of black jelly beans because it probably would have been enough for him. I've just pulled out my roll of Scotch foam tape. It's the big roll of foam tape, the half inch foam tape by um, the uh, the uh, 36, I think it's 36 inches if I remember correctly. Um, you can buy it at the Giant Rolls at Amazon. They're usually between about 25 and 35 dollars depending on uh, what you find. But I put it on the back of that date die cut so that there would be some dimension there. And then I added that star. And those enamel stars are from Chicken Itty um, Crafts. They're from the Jolly Good collection. was a Christmas collection from two years ago. So lots of fun pastel -y, bright colors there. So I'm going to scatter those around the green. There, I only had two of those green ones. And they were perfect for the, the color on here. They match up with the polka dot paper really well. And now I'm going to fool around quite a bit trying to decide where exactly to put that star. And, um, and I end up actually, once I get it down, then I bring some more stars in eventually, or another star in, and, and uh, put something on top of it anyway, as much as I tried to get that down. And looking at it from this perspective, I'm really glad that I did that because um, I really don't like it with just the one star looking at that. And like I said, I'm sorry that part of this is off camera. You're seeing a lot of my um, pile of stuff there that I was working from. Which I guess is not a bad thing, but fortunately what I'm doing is actually pretty much in frame here. Just sticking that sticker down. And I didn't put that up on the foam tape because the chipboard, once I get that down, is going to provide some dimension in that cluster. I like to get at least pieces of the clusters up on some foam tape because that just helps, you know, it helps give interest to your layout. And I am using three clusters here, traditional. I looked there at some more Chicken Itty Crafts enamel dots. I was thinking about putting them on there. And I added a yellow enamel star there. I just think it adds a little bit of, um, extra color into that and then a pink one into the other one. It's bringing the colors even more throughout the layout. And then last but not least, I'm going to glue a couple things down here and then I'm going to pull some of the periods from that American Crafts Fancy 
um, thicker set and I'm going to just scatter them around like enamel dots and it just brings some more black into the layout um, just so that it's you know bringing things together I guess would be the the best way to um, explain that it brings some of the glitter that's in the title into the rest of the layout as well I am just about done here as I said there'll be a still at the end and some detail shots and that still I'm going to um, let go just a little bit longer than normal so you can take a look at it hope you're all having a great day bye